Welcome to Doge Log Index 7. This is the series where I share the business and development process of taking a project I started as a joke called Doge House and turning it into a billion dollar unicorn company that is going to the moon. On Doge House you can create rooms where people can talk over voice and text chat, but whenever you let people on the internet talk to each other, someone's going to try to ruin the experience for somebody else. Which is why we have buttons for you to ban someone from text chat or ban them from the entire room. This week we ran into a situation of somebody banavating, where they got banned from a room, they weren't happy about it, so they made a new Doge House account, joined the room again, proceeded to get banned again, and create another Doge House account, rejoined, and the cycle just went over and over again. From a technical point of view, there's no way to completely stop this kind of behavior if the harasser knows what they're doing, because they can literally spoof everything about themselves. Discord deals with this as well, and I found a resource of what they recommend doing when this happens to your Discord server. And it comes down to just having a conversation with the person who's banavating, asking them how they're feeling, using some conflict resolution strategies to make them feel like you're listening to them, and kind of get their point of view and come to some sort of resolution. This is in the extreme case where a harasser has made it through all the technical hurdles that a website can put in place. And this week I added a single technical hurdle to Doge House, IP bans. When you log into Doge House now, we store your IP in our database, which is roughly a unique identifier for your computer. Key emphasis on the rough part, because there are some if, ands, or buts with that. But room owners can now ban a user and no one with their IP can now join the room. Which means if I'm a harasser and I get IP banned from a room, I can't just on my same computer open up a new tab, create a Doge House account, and try joining that room because my IP is now banned. I have to at least press one other button, which is to turn on my VPN. This is virtually nothing to technical people because there's ways to change and mask your IP, the simplest being just using a VPN. But this is basically an unstoppable ban for normies. If I IP ban your mom from my room, she's hard locked out until on a whim she decides to try it on another computer or something, in which case I'll IP ban her again. We haven't had a problem with people ban evading IP bans yet. I know eventually this will probably become a problem, in which case maybe I'll need to start banning IPs from VPNs or proxies or do some sort of fingerprinting. But I also want to experiment with some moderation tools that have nothing to do with IPs. The first is follower only mode for text chat. And this is something that Twitch does where you have to be following the creator of the room for at least X amount of time before you can interact and chat. Sometimes it's 30 minutes or something. And this just cuts down on the drive-by harassment of people that just join a chat or a room and right away start being toxic. Now, if I wanna be toxic to a random person, I have to join their room follow them, wait 30 minutes, which is going to get rid of all the low effort harassers that want that instant gratification from harassing. And it's just going to leave you with a few dedicated harassers and those you can either IP ban or use my next technique, shadow bans. I'm a big fan of these because the entire goal of a harasser is to get some sort of reaction out of you. So when you do regular bans and they know they've been banned, it's almost like they just earned an achievement. They got what they wanted. When you take that away with a shadow ban and the harasser is no longer getting any reactions whatsoever, you've taken away the enjoyment or the whole reason why the harasser is doing that. And so this can lead to them just naturally stopping on their own. Or at the very least, you don't have to read their messages and their first reaction isn't to create another Doge House account and start sending you messages again. Because hopefully, they didn't realize that they got shadow banned. But if I code it right, they'll never know. <laughs> the basic philosophy is to just keep setting up these technical hurdles and make the effort to harass somebody high enough that harassers just don't deem it worth their time to continue doing it. It's really tough balancing moderation and spam protection without degrading the experience for regular users and not doing an invasion of privacy. I don't want to store your IP. I don't want to fingerprint you. But when you don't do some of these things, malicious people can just run rampant on your platform. I'll probably also add a setting for room creators where they can just totally turn off text chat. So that way a random person, the only way for them to be toxic is for them to ask to speak and you letting them on the stage. I have added regular blocking for when a user is not necessarily ban evading, you just never wanna see them. If you go to their profile, you can block. And what that does is three things. Number one, if they try to join your room, right? It's gonna tell you you've been blocked. Secondly, if they try to search up your username, it's gonna tell you you've been blocked. 
And then if we happen to both be in the same room, like I join Mango, I join Mango too, and we send text chats, I'm not gonna see the AngularJS chat because I have them blocked. Now, one thing I wasn't quite sure about is if we both were to join as speakers, I have it able that we can hear each other. I figured it'd be weird if there was large gaps of silence where everyone was listening to somebody, but then you couldn't hear them. So I figured if you really didn't wanna hear them, you could just go and reduce their volume down to zero manually if the situation even comes up ever for you. The oopsie of the week has to do with making bot accounts. I wanted a way to know if you're a user or if you're a bot it didn't really make sense for a bot to authenticate using Twitter or GitHub OAuth 2, so I set up a new endpoint that developers could use. It allowed you to create bot accounts which would be attached to your user and give you an API key that you could use to authenticate programmatically. I also limited it to 100 bots per user, that way it didn't get too out of control. The problem was with my logic for creating bot accounts, I didn't stop bots from creating other bots, which allowed you to make infinite user accounts. This is equivalent to having a register page with no rate limiting whatsoever, so oops, kind of a noob move. Somebody did create 3,000 accounts, but we did put them to good use and do some stress testing. Turns out when 700 users join a room all at the same time, it blocks all events for that room until it finishes processing and kind of crashes chat. So we might need to do a little bit of performance tuning before Elon Musk comes on the platform. Discord is once again back at it, adding features to stages faster than they should be. This time they're adding the ability for you to do a ticket system where users have to pay X amount of dollars to join your stage and listen to whatever you have to say. Funny enough, Twitter Spaces is also adding this feature, which I'm pretty happy to see because Discord and Twitter can fight a little bit. And I was kind of planning to add this to Doge House as well, kind of just like a why not feature, but now I'm not going to add it for a very long time, maybe never. Personally, I don't even like the feature that much. I much prefer free rooms where there's paid upgrades or something where people can flex their cosmetics or something. Don't get me wrong though, I think paid rooms are a good feature and it's gonna enable conferences, workshops, lewd rooms, all kinds of stuff. But I feel like the paid voice room space is about to get heavily congested. I wouldn't be surprised if Clubhouse jumps in on this too. And I feel like paid rooms have less use cases than freemium rooms. Imagine on Doge House if a few people from the audience could boost the room. <laughs> How do you like them, Apple's Discord? That's it for this Doge log. The business team didn't do much this week except play some golf. Stay tuned until next week where maybe the dev team will be done finishing bugs and possibly do some room recordings.